everybody and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac and we are back for episode 13 of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock. Last episode we were working on a little bit of blood magic and at the very end of last episode we made ourselves this redstone solar panel which is now set up fully functional and generating power for our system over here. And what I want to work on in today's episode is starting to work towards getting some of the mid-game tech stuff. For example, uh, if we wanted to upgrade our jetpack, right now we have all almost everything it takes to make this apart from the fact that the hand thruster requires a reactant dynamo and the reactant dynamo requires a piece of uranium 238 uh, another example is applied energistics in order to get started uh, with applied energistics which by the way is much much harder to do in this mod pack than it normally is we need either an energy acceptor or an ME controller both of which require the Surtis quartz wrench and to make the Surtis quartz wrench we need two of these enriched sunarium alloys to get those we need normal sunarium alloys and to get those we need iridium reinforced plates which requires iridium ore made using mox fuel which is made you guessed it from uranium 238 and so uh, if you haven't already guessed in today's episode we are going to work towards getting some of this uranium 238 thankfully it's not all that hard to make we can make it in a thermal centrifuge using some crushed uranium ore and uh, luckily for us the way that you get crushed uranium ore is by sifting sand and over the past five episodes we have been sifting a lot of sand and so if we come over into this chest over here we have quite a lot of crushed uranium ore ready to be turned into uranium 238 all that we need is a thermal centrifuge so we're going to start with the thermal centrifuge the thermal centrifuge is a fairly easy machine to make in terms of the resources it requires we have more than enough resources to make all of the items in here uh, however it's a bit of a pain to make because almost all of the items uh, that you need to make it require some form of processing so apart from these iron ingots here which are just iron ingots we need some coils which are made using copper cable which is copper uh, put through the metal former we need an electronic motor which requires tin item casing that's tin put through the metal former we also need more coils more copper through the metal former the advanced machine requires these advanced alloys which requires a mixed metal ingot which is just more plates more stuff in the metal former you kind of getting the idea it's a lot of time in front of the metal former uh, thankfully i also figured out between episodes uh, that you can actually insert a plate cast into the metal press over here uh, i've got one in my right now and you can use this to make plates as well and i think it might be a little bit faster than the metal former is at generating plates i used it to make uh, some of these steel plates that we'll use later on in today's episode but the good news is that we can make plates at least twice as fast now because we can have some going over here and some going over there and so what i'm going to do now guys to make sure that this entire episode isn't just me trying to make all of the parts for the thermal centrifuge is i'm going to go away i'm going to get all of the stuff we need to make at the thermal centrifuge apart from the mining laser here because this requires uh, that we make a few more machines before we can actually craft it but i'm gonna go away i'm gonna make all the rest of the stuff and i'll be back in a second and a little while later now that i've got the advanced machine casing here we now have everything that we need apart from the mining laser to make ourselves the thermal centrifuge so the mining laser was left out for a few reasons one of which is because it requires this iron turning blank which requires a turning table which is a whole setup of its own uh, which we'll do later on in today's episode but it also requires one of these advanced circuits over here and to get this we need some of these basic capacitors for those we need some signalum and to get signalum we need these stabilized redstone and to get that we're going to need a magma crucible and a fluid transposer two new machines from thermal expansion so over here in the assembly table i've got almost everything we need to make two more of those machine frames all we need is some more of these steel plates we can take those and compress those up in the compressor uh, into some compressed steel plates which can then be used uh, as the final part of actually making the machine frame whilst we wait for all of that i want to take a bit of a detour and work on upgrading our current thermal expansion machines because right now uh, our system for producing all of the dusts for actually making ingots is a lot faster than our system for actually processing them for example right now uh, this isn't working because we've got some sulfur and some coal in here uh, but normally if this thing is running at full speed which it is right now it's still not fast enough we still get a backlog up here and then we end up with backlogs back here which results in items spewing all over the place and so what i want to do is i want to upgrade my pulverizer and my redstone furnace so that they're both a little bit faster than they already are let 
let me quickly check over here to see how well this is doing. Those are both done. So we can start working on the machine frame like so. Uh, and now if we go ahead and look at some more augments like we used before to speed up our dynamos, there is an augment, there are three augments here that you can use to speed up your machines. For example, this one here, the secondary reception coil, will double the speed at which our pulverizer or our redstone furnace works. And thankfully, it's actually not too hard to make. All we need is four bronze, two of these redstone reception coils, as well as a redstone chipset. Uh, I went ahead and made quite a few of these redstone chipsets a little while back, and by quite a few, I of course mean six. And the redstone reception coils as well are not too hard to make. We also have a uh, 78 bronze over here in this drawer. So making two of these should be fairly easy. Let me go ahead and do something like this. We need one more redstone. And uh, let's chuck that in over there, throw the gold in the middle. That gets us the reception coils. Actually, let's get two more of those so we can make uh, one for the pulverizer and one for the redstone furnace. Uh, I think it mostly lies on the redstone furnace. That's where the bottleneck is really happening right now because I often see the pulverizer not doing anything and waiting for the redstone furnace to finish smelting up all of the previous items. Like, for example, copper right now uh, is being smelted up, but once copper has finished being pulverized and, for example, nickel moves in, uh, the pulverizer will have to wait until the copper has finished smelting up before you can start sending the nickel over. Uh, and so it creates a bit of a bottleneck, and I would like to get rid of that as much as possible. Now, uh, we've made these two upgrades, but we can't actually put them in to our current machines because if we hover over these and again press shift, it says requires a hardened machine. And to do that, there are two different ways you can do it. Uh, one of which is when you make the machine, make it using a hardened frame, which is this one over here. We didn't do that, and we're not going to remake these machines just to put a hardened frame in them. Uh, but what you can do instead is if we look up the recipe, for example, for a pulverizer, uh, you can actually upgrade them simply by crafting them with other items. For example, we can turn a basic pulverizer into a hardened pulverizer with four invar and an electrum gear. And this seems like the much easier way, even if you know from the get-go that you're going to want to make a hardened pulverizer. I think this is going to be the easier way to go because it doesn't require any kind of time sink and it doesn't require any kind of extra power. Whereas making a hardened uh, machine frame over a basic machine frame takes a lot more time, requires a lot more power and requires more expensive resources. And so what we're going to do is do this sink here for both the pulverizer. And I think it's exactly the same for the redstone furnace. Let's have a look real quick. It is exactly the same. And so for that, we're going to need two of those electrum gears. Thankfully, again, we have a bunch of gold and a bunch of silver. And we also have this induction furnace over here. So making electrum is super easy. I think we might already have some invar. We do not. We've got some aluminium. But again, just like before, what we can do is we can take some iron and some ferrous. I think it's actually two iron to every one ferrous. So we're going to take double the amount of iron that we do ferrous. But uh, once we've got that, let's quickly whip up some more electrum because we're going to need eight for the two gears. Once we've got those, we can put in the iron and the ferrous. That should make us some invar. That probably won't be enough. I think that's going to get us six when, in fact, we need eight. Let's quickly throw you into there. That's going to get us nothing. Stop, stop, stop. Ah, there we go. Yep. I didn't want that to make plate. I actually wanted to make gears, if at all possible. I'm glad I stopped that when I did. And that made the first gear. Let me just quickly throw those back into there. That should get us the second gear. Let me quickly grab uh, two more iron and one more ferrous to get ourselves three more invar, uh, taking us up to nine. Uh, actually, we've got more than enough iron. I can put this stuff back. And uh, that's going to take us up to nine, which is more than the eight that we need to upgrade our machines. At this point, the Electrum gears are done. I say when they are actually not at all done. Why is that not working? It's because I accidentally let one Electrum plate through, so I've gone ahead and made some more Electrum. Throwing that in there should get us our second Electrum gear, at which point uh, we should be fairly easily able to upgrade both of these. So let me grab uh, both of these real quick. We've got to make sure they don't uh, get pulled towards that vacuum hopper and thrown away into the trash can. Okay, so let's craft both of these up into their hardened versions. We'll put the Electrum in the top. We'll put the Invar around the side. That gets us a hardened redstone furnace and a hardened pulverizer. Nice. We can then take those, put them exactly where they were before, throw in the upgrade, and they should run twice as fast. They will consume twice as much power, but they should also run twice as fast as they were doing before. So I put that there and throw in my augment, this guy over here. You'll see that it now uses up to 60 redstone flux per tick. Uh, and that is because it says times two, but then it also says times three RF per tick. Uh, so I think it runs at twice the speed, but requires three times as much power. I'm not quite sure. That might be a tweak for expert mode. But if we were to put, uh, for example, all this copper back in, uh, it's now running much, much faster than it was before. and should hopefully be able to keep up with all of the stuff that's coming out of this 
set up over here. If it's not, all we're going to have to do is upgrade it again, add some more of those augments to make it even faster, make it consume even more power than it already is. Uh, I'm not too worried about power right now. We have this thing's running at full speed. It's at 500 degrees Celsius. Uh, and these guys are all pretty much full up on power and not even producing anywhere near their maximum amount of redstone flux per tick. So I'm, we, we're doing more than well enough on power for the time being to actually get both of these uh, running at three times as much RF as they were originally. Uh, so that shouldn't be too big of a deal. These two machine frames are now done. And so what we can do now is go back over to our thermal centrifuge quest and we need to make ourselves a magma crucible and a fluid transposer. So the magma crucible is this guy over here. To make this, we need a lightstone energy cell frame, two nether bricks, two invar gears, and one redstone reception coil, as well as, of course, a machine frame. For the fluid transposer, we need a bucket, two glass, two copper gears, one redstone reception coil, and, of course, again, a machine frame. And so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to grab all this stuff, and I'll be back in a second. And again, a little while later, we now have everything that we need to make ourselves a fluid transposer, and we also have everything that we need to make ourselves the magma crucible. Nice. So these two machines work very nicely together. We'll put one of them down uh, right about here, and we'll put the fluid transposer down right next to it like that. I'm glad that this wire connection seems to have held up, because I don't want to have to put down uh, another one of these MV wire connectors somewhere in the middle. But basically, the way this works is the magma crucible uh, turns solids into liquids in a sense. So for example, if we put some redstone into the magma crucible, it will begin turning that redstone into destabilized redstone and then over in the fluid transposer the fluid transposer can put fluids into other items for example uh, if we go over here and go to the configuration tab uh, this side on the right is set to output that's correct we want all the rest of them uh, for the time being to be turned off like so and then on the fluid transposer we want the left to be an input so we want the left to be blue like so and once it's blue all of the redstone will move from the magma crucible over into the fluid transposer and you'll see right now it's set to move fluids from this side to this side. You can click this button to toggle it to go the other way. You can use this mode to take fluids out of items and put them back into the internal tank of the fluid transposer. But now we want to do it the other way. We want to take redstone out of the fluid transposer and put it into our bucket here. So we put the bucket in this slot over there. It will slowly fill up and once it's filled up, we have ourselves a bucket of destabilized redstone. Like I said before, we can turn it the other way around, put the bucket over here. It will take the redstone out of the bucket, put it back into the uh, the internal tank there. That's not what we want and uh, so we're going to fill this up. And that is how we get destabilized redstone so now that we've got that if we go back over to the thermal centrifuge again this guy over here the mining laser uh, requires the advanced circuit the advanced circuit requires a basic capacitor the basic capacitor requires some signalum and to get signalum we need to get ourselves some destabilized redstone as well as three copper powder and one silver powder so let's quickly grab ourselves three copper and one silver we can throw all these into the pulverizer thankfully the pulverizer is now twice as fast as it was before so hopefully uh, getting all of these won't take too too, too long. Uh, after that, all that we need is the four redstone basic chipsets, which we do have in our inventory already, which is pretty cool. We also need these two intricate circuit boards, which require some gold and some redstone in the carpenter. All stuff we've done before, as well as a normal circuit. So, uh, once I've got all three of those, let's quickly smelt this up. I'm going to make the one piece of signalum here on camera, and I'm going to go away and create the rest of the stuff again off camera, because it's all stuff that we've made before, and it's not really stuff that you need to watch me make over and over and over again. Uh, so, we can throw the signalum in here. That's going to get us a nice four signalum ingots which we can then use to make a signalum nuggets which we can now use to make ourselves these basic capacitors uh, as for the lapis electron tubes they are just lapis and redstone and uh, so again i'm going to go away i'm going to try and get everything that we need to make the advanced circuit as well as pretty much everything else to make the mining laser and i'll be back in a second Okay, so I'm part way through making all of the stuff that we need to get the advanced circuit when I realized that we're going to need quite a bit of rubber in today's episode, mostly to make insulated copper cable, but also uh, to make a few other things once we start getting some uranium. Uh, so what I'm going to make real quick here is an extractor. Uh, this is another machine from Industrial Craft 2, kind of like uh, the metal form of the compressor and the generator that we have over here. And basically, the main reason I'm making this is it's going to allow us to turn normal rubber wood, which we get uh, when we cut down rubber trees, into actual rubber, and it also allows us to get three rubber from every sticky resin as opposed to one uh, that we get when we smelt it normally. Uh, so, if we were to go ahead and quickly whip up a few of these tree taps like so, we'll take one. Ah, oh, these don't stack. These are such a massive pain uh, because they do not stack which is the worst thing ever. But once we've got four of those, uh, we can go ahead and put all these in. Again, because they don't stack, uh, we can't use the NEI shift click feature, but uh, once we've got all those like that, we get ourselves a compressor which, for now, I'm going to stick down right on the end here. I could probably put it... Ooh, that might cause a bit of an issue 
Actually, what I'll do is I'll make another cover to put there. Uh, I should probably get rid of the generator and just put it here because this thing is doing absolutely nothing at this moment in time. But uh, all we need to do now is grab another one of these MV wire connectors, stick it down there, use some MV wire to do something like that. And this should now be able to start turning our rubber wood into actual rubber slowly but surely. And we'll also uh, triple the amount of rubber that we get using normal sticky resin, which is going to make getting rubber in the future a lot easier. But now that I've done that, I'm going to go away again, continue to get all the stuff for the advanced circuit. And I'll be back in a second. And again, not too long later, we now have ourselves everything we need to make the first advanced circuit. And now all that we're missing for the mining laser is the energy crystal as well as the iron turning blank. Now the energy crystal, thankfully, is much, much easier to make than the iron turning blank. To make the energy crystal, all that we need is nine of this energy dust, which is made using redstone dust combined with some diamond dust. We should have a ton of diamond dust from all the sand that we've been sifting. We also have a ton of redstone dust, of course, from all the dust that we've been sifting. And so making nine of this is super easy we can then throw that into the compressor and make ourselves one of the energy crystals uh, whilst i was doing all of this stuff i also decided to make a few more of these lasers here as you can see they're not all running at full speed if they were all running at full speed they'd all be blue or some of these ones are kind of flickering between blue and not being blue uh, but that is because our power system is starting to get strained just a little bit by running all of these we currently have 11 of these which are using 440 redstone flux per tick so it's no surprise that they're actually using uh, more than our system's capacity uh, so what i'll probably end up doing at some point is adding a bunch more of these uh, secondary coils which we have in this guy over here to double the amount of redstone flux that all of these steam dynamos produce but for now uh, back over here our energy crystal is done and finally the only thing that we have left to make is probably the hardest part of all of this and that is the iron turning blank to make this we need a turning table as well as an electric kinetic generator uh, and both of these again are, are recipes that are not too hard to make but take a lot of time and a very but, but uh, very boring to watch, which is why uh, a lot of this episode has been me, like, cutting away to make stuff. Uh, because to make the turning table, again, we need more iron item casing. Uh, basically, all of this is just iron put through a metal former. Super easy to do. Uh, and then the kinetic generator uh, is more of the same. It's more iron put through the turning table. Uh, it's an RE battery, which is some tin, which is tin put through the metal former. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to get all the stuff that I need for the electric generator and the turning table. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so wait too long later we finally have the turning table and the electric kinetic generator now in order to power the turning table you need to use some kind of kinetic generator it can't use normal eu or rf uh, power from any of the machines we currently have uh, and that's why we've made this electric kinetic generator and uh, what this does is it converts electric energy eu into kinetic energy the uh, ku per tick which is what we're going to use to power the turning table now for some unknown reason uh, the electric kinetic generator does not play nicely with the the wire connectors from immersive engineering it doesn't allow them to transmit power into the electric kinetic generator at least it doesn't in the version that i'm playing on uh, in a single player test world i couldn't get it to work and so what we're going to do to get power into the electric kinetic generator is we're going to have all of our power go through an industrial craft two storage cell so for example right now uh, we've got this cell over here the hardened energy cell which is storing all of our redstone flux we're going to make something similar that stores eu and for that we're going to start out with a battery box or a bat box i think it might be called here uh, this guy over here, to make this, all we need is some wood, an insulated tin cable, and then three RE batteries. RE batteries being made with insulated tin cable, some electroline, and some tin item casing. We have almost all of that ready to go. We got some tin cables and some rubber. Also, I have no idea why it's always raining. Every time I cut away to go do some stuff, it always starts raining. I always sleep to make sure the rain stops, so that it always starts raining again. I have no idea why it is constantly raining. It's driving me insane. But, <laughs> now that we've got that, uh, we can come back over to our crafting table. What are we missing we're missing electroline let me take some of this stuff and back in here we can put that in the middle we can put the tin cables at the top we can put the tin item casing all around we're going to need at least three of those which means we're going to need a little bit more tin casing i really thought we were going to have enough but to make that all we need to do is come on over to our metal press throw that into there like so that's going to get us some more plates which we can then put into the metal former to make ourselves a bat box we have almost everything else we need to make and this thing right now is busy making me a ton of copper cable and you'll see why we need that in just a second. Let's go grab these 10 plates. Let's quickly throw those through the metal farmer. 
Uh, I say quickly, it's fairly slow. Uh, we could put some uh, some overclockers into here. Uh, for those who are unaware, overclockers are basically the same as the speed upgrades that we're putting into our dynamos and into our uh, thermal expansion machines, but they work on industrial craft machines. Unfortunately, they're a little bit more expensive. They require some gold as well as a reactor heat vent, uh, which is made using a bunch of copper as well as a normal heat vent, which is a bunch of iron and electric motor, which is just more tin item casing, more wires, more wires. It's just such a hassle to make all of the stuff from industrial craft too. But uh, we have now made, oh, I had it on the wrong mode. We made ourselves some energy cells. Flipping heck. Let me go make some more of that tin item casing real quick. Okay, so once we've actually got the tin item casing, we can make the third RE battery, at which point uh, we can go ahead and put those in the middle. We can put wood all around like so, and that gets us a bat box, which can hold up to 40,000 uh, EU at max capacity. And so what we'll do for now is we will stick this down, I guess, like right here. This place is getting a bit clogged up. And uh, the reason why I moved the bed, by the way, is because the, the mobs are spawning over there, and I couldn't sleep whilst the mobs were nearby. I don't know if I mentioned that in a previous episode, but... Uh, all we need to do now is, again, grab another one of these MV connectors. I'm not quite sure how many of those we have left. We've got one left uh, after this one. So we'll put that down. We'll hook this up like so. That should then begin to fill up with power super quickly. Uh, and now what we need to do is get ourselves some of these insulated copper cables, which, outside of crafting, are actually used to transfer power to industrial craft machines. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our electric kinetic generator right about there. Once that's down, it should start to gain power. This should go red, and it is. And then we can put our turning table down right here. And this now is almost getting power. It's not quite getting power because in order for the kinetic generator to actually uh, transfer EU into KU, it needs one of these electric motors. So for now, I'm going to put this in here. We'll probably take this out at some point because we do need it to make our thermal centrifuge. But uh, every single one of these that you put into the kinetic generator uh, increases the KU per tick that it can make by 100. And uh, so now we can actually start to work on the turning table and start to work towards making this mining laser so uh, if we take a quick look at this over here this iron turning blank the way that we make this is we need the pattern 43222 we also need a lathing tool as well as a turning blank so the lathing tool is made with a steel plate as well as two item casing uh, i don't think we currently have a steel plate so let's go ahead and quickly make one of those we do have a few spare iron item casing and uh, so making that should be fine we'll throw you in there and uh, let's do a quick look in here at what we need for the empty turning i think it's called we need one of these over here the iron Iron turning blank to make that which need two iron ingots and an iron item casing again we've got eight iron item casing spare so making that should be fairly easy uh, so let's come back over here let's put you in the top left let's do something like that to get us the lathing tool and we can put iron ingots either side of an iron item casing to get ourselves the iron turning blank now that we've got all of this stuff set up we can actually start uh, to carve into you will put these two in here like this we can actually start to carve into this iron turning blank and you do that by simply clicking on these buttons along the top here so we want this one to be two we want this one to be two this one to be two this one to be three and this one to be four and we now have an iron turning blank handle uh, if we press u on it we can see we can use this to craft a mining laser and now we finally i think have everything it takes to actually go ahead and do this uh, by the way if that electric motor isn't in here or you don't have the kinetic generator uh, it won't let you click these buttons in the turning table it just won't work but if we come back over here now i think we have pretty much everything we need to make the thermal center refuge so let's start by making ourselves a mining laser we're going to need a little bit of redstone let me grab two of those other than that i think we have pretty much everything uh let's see we want to put the circuit there we want to put the redstone at the top we want to put you over there you need to go there you guys need to go like that and that gets us a mining laser we can then put that at the top with these two either side we then want the advanced machine casing in the middle we want the electric motor at the bottom and finally all we need is four iron ingots on either side like so and we finally get ourselves a thermal centrifuge pretty cool uh, it took way too long to make but pretty cool now i am going to break this generator it is going to actually break uh, because i'm using a pickaxe to pick it up instead of a wrench oh it didn't break that does happen with other industrial craft two machines i wouldn't recommend picking anything up with a pickaxe because sometimes they do break although apparently the generator doesn't and i'm going to instead put my thermal centrifuge for now right about here now, uh, you may remember earlier I said that we're going to need rubber for things other than making uh, insulated cable, and that is because when you get uranium, uranium is radioactive, and so if you pick up uranium without wearing a hazmat suit, uh, you get radiation and you start to die. And so if we go and type in hazmat, we need to make ourselves uh, some of the hazmat armor. So we need a hazmat suit, hazmat leggings, as well as, I think, uh, rubber boots and a scuba helmet are the items that we need. Uh, to make this, we need a bunch of rubber, as well as some orange dye. Thankfully, we have a 
bunch of rose red and dandelion yellow over here. So making some orange dye shouldn't be too hard whatsoever. We'll put both those in there. We'll take out some orange dye. We can then craft that up into a hazmat suit chest plate. We can then craft that up into a hazmat suit leggings, I think, if we do something like that. Yeah, there we go. We can take that. We're then going to need rubber boots, which I think might just be this, but we need a piece of wool. Uh, so let me grab some string here. Let's take four string, craft that into wool, and then try putting that in the middle. Let's see if I remember this recipe correctly. It is, I guess, his rubber boots. And then for the scuba helmet, this guy over here, uh, we need, oh wow, we need some iron bars, some glass, and the dye. Uh, I think we should, again, still have some iron bars lying around somewhere. We do. We'll take you. We'll also take a piece of glass like so. And then we can craft all that up to make... The scuba helmet. Nice. So now if we put all of these on, we have to take off our jetpack to do this. If we put all of these on, we are now immune from the effect of uranium giving us radiation. And so what we need to do is come over here, grab ourselves some of this crushed uranium that we have in here, stick it into our thermal centrifuge like so. It does need some power in order to work. So we are going to have to, for now, I guess, just get rid of this. We can always make some more connectors and actually connect this back up. But for now, let's put you here and then do something like that. That should then start to heat up and as it heats up it'll get faster and faster but that should start to produce uranium very slowly like very very slowly i think it's probably gonna take quite a while to actually work you'll see it needs heat 5000 to do some things i'm fairly certain that to get this into uranium it needs heat 3000 okay so once we get to heat 3000 which is actually the maximum that our thermal centrifuge here can get to uh, it should actually start to turn this uranium into uranium 238 so i'm gonna wait here a second until it gets up there and there we go. Now that it has reached a 3,001 in heat, you can see this yellow bar in the middle is very slowly climbing up. And every time that gets to full, I believe it will go ahead and give us all of the outputs for crushed uranium. If we look over here, we can get some tiny piles of uranium as well as some stone dust here. I'm not quite sure what we're going to use stone dust for. We can use it to make binder composite as well as CF powder. CF powder might be useful later on down the line. Uh, but for now, that should be fine. Did that output to somewhere that I'm not seeing. No, it didn't. It just didn't show up originally. But we now have some uranium. We can take this out. We can carry it because our armor is fully on and protecting us. If we take one off, uh, it does start to give us uh, that radiation, which will then start to hurt us and take damage. So we want to make sure we keep this on whenever we are dealing with uranium-238. We should probably keep this in like a safe, secure place somewhere. But we now have the ability to process it, which moves us one step further towards the mid-game and late-game tech stuff, getting applied energy sticks, getting better jetpacks, getting better machines, and all that kind of stuff. And with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock there. As always, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like button. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.